Hi Crafty Gang, this is my bit of the Claire's Crafty Corner Christmas Collaboration 2023. <laughs> now, every Christmas I get inundated, or well, not inundated, I get a lot of requests via my eBay shop for guinea pig related things. So it's the only time of year that I ever really sell anything in any sort of scale. Um, but it, yeah, it happens and it's usually guinea pig stuff. So <laughs> this year what has happened as usual is people are ordering baubles. That's uh, an eight centimetre one. And are sending me pictures of their guinea pigs. Aren't they lovely? That's two, diff two different batches of guinea pigs. We've got these two and we've got these two, which for some reason are wearing witches hats. And uh, that's that one. So I can see what colour its back end is. Yeah, aren't they lovely? Anyway, they want them put in Christmas baubles, little snow scenes. Let me show you how we do it. So we have little trees. I'm going to put glitter on these as well. So we need some glitter and a bit of imagination. But the first thing to do, once we made our little guinea pigs, these are just made from a mould that I made myself. It's the same one as I use for my guinea pig fairy lights. And they're just made of plaster. But first thing we need to do then, once we've got our little things together that we want to put in it, is make the snow for the base. So this is a slightly damaged one of my baubles. I'm going to use this to make my bases in. I'm going to be using eco pour because it cures really nice and white. Could just use plaster of course, but I'm going to use eco pour. So I've got two of these I've got to make, so let's get one done and then that's the other thing, eco pour dries really quickly. But you can see how white it is, it's actually whiter, I don't know if that's coming over on camera, but it's whiter than the plaster. Now as this is going to be snow, we really do want it to be nice and white. So I thought this time, I don't usually use eco pour for this, but I'm going to. So I'll leave you the links for everything you might need if you fancy making something like this down below. Um, for the baubles, the little trees, and of course the eco pour. And this will all make sense shortly. <laughs> so this is our first part going in. And you might be thinking, why on earth is that going into the bottom of, or rather what will be the side of the bauble? Well, you will see. We'll see. Just need to let this cure up. There we go, as much as I can out of my little cup, I think that should be enough. It doesn't have to be too exact, because this is just going to be the base for your snow. So what I'm going to do is get that one made. I'll let that one, I'll let that one cure off. We'll make a second one, and then we'll look at what we do next, because then we'll be moving on to the actual snow to go onto the surface. We'll be looking at how we, what we do with the tree, if we want to make it a bit more fun, and painting our little guinea pigs. And I have got some pictures of, of customers' guinea pigs that they have sent me to work from. So there we are, personalised too. Of course you could do these little cats and dogs, you could put little cars in them, whatever you like. Anyway, I've just sat this in a little pot to keep it up the right way, and uh, which I've borrowed off my guinea pig. <laughs> it's his little treat food bowl. So we'll see what this looks like shortly, and we will move on. So, to get them out of my spare half a mould. That was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> now, we're going to need to put snow on those, but like I said, I'm going to let the moisture go out of them properly overnight. In the meantime, let's turn our attention to our little tree. two cutesy little trees here. What we're going to do, that one I've already cut the base off and it's I've used it before for something actually, that's why it's got a bit of snow stuck to the bottom, but this one we haven't, so cut that off. That just says it will sit straight on the snow. Now what I can see is that this is, it's got a couple of bits like sticking out. So I'm going to cut it as flat as I can so it'll sit reasonably flat. But there we go, that's our Christmas tree felled. Now, we're going to need some PVA glue and some glitter. You, you probably know what's coming here. <laughs> it is going to go everywhere. I'm going to get a bit of paper and put under it first of all. So next we'll be painting the piggies. Because they're Herculite plaster, they, they absorb 
but just normal acrylic paint really easily so that's all we use now someone has sent me a picture of their pictures of their piggies these aren't the best printed pictures but i know what these colors look like this one is a um a dutch crested and that silver agouti effect the dutch is the color pattern so it looks like a little badger <laughs> They usually have a coloured bum as well. The flecky effect in the colour is the agouti effect, so that's silver agouti. This one is a kind of tricolour that's gone all sort of crazy with the colours. <laughs> so that's that one and this is also the same pig. Good job they sent me that view because I want to know from this picture that you've got a black bum. Boom. <laughs> nice little black bum. Now this is, these two, that's gone off the side, but this is a... Um, another book the second bauble so this is one which is a dutch with a bit of tricolor in it um and that is a that looks like a self cream to me but it's got a bit of ridge back going on um which is like i have shot because i printed it funny but there we are so that's what we're painting and a load of extras to go into stock We've got all our component parts, got some snow, and I've painted the guinea pigs. Now, they were just made out of plaster, and I just painted them to look like those guinea pigs in the pictures. And then I gave them a quick blow over with some clear varnish to seal them. So there's our guinea pigs. Now, this is the fun, easy bit. First of all, let's get our snow open. I've got a big tub of snow somewhere. Do you think I can find it? Honestly, it's not even small. I don't know how I've mislaid it, but the first thing I want to do is mix a little bit of glitter in with this. The way we're going to do this, nice and easy, I'm going to cut the bag open because it's less messy. Very fine powder. Got this from the model centre, so thank you to the model centre for getting it to me so quickly. I was having a bit of a breakdown because I couldn't find my snow. And uh, just ordered this off them via eBay and it came within a couple of days which is great so as you can see it's very fine now you can get snow that's more of a flock it's a bit chunkier you sometimes use that as well that big tub if i ever find it we'll have that in it so i'm just going to mix in some of this glitter now this is just a random white glitter that i got from somewhere i don't know where I've had it for a long time and i'm just going to give it a little stir up we are so it's just got a bit of a shimmer mixed in with the with the snow that's all <laughs> all we're going to need next is some pva now i'll show you how easy these come out by the way <laughs> there you go <laughs> so we're going to be popping some pva onto there pva it's the stuff that tradesmen tend to use my other half uses it painting and decorating i don't quite know what he does with it there's some bits on the surface here and I poked it so it's not particularly even. You can actually fluff the surface up a bit if you want. You could, you know, stick lumpy bits on it so it looks like snow drifts. You can do what you like, but I just tend to chuck it in. And then I chuck this on nice and thick. And then I do this. Or you can either dunk it or actually, I think I get a less uniform even effect which looks a bit more natural she says having just tipped glitter into it um yeah like that <laughs> then give it a little pat and tip it off and there we have snow let's do the other one now i'm going to leave these an hour or two to dry while i have some lunch because as you can see I have put the PVA on very thick so it will take a little while to dry although because I've used it's not plaster is it did I use eco pour yes I used eco pour didn't I um rather than plaster it will it is still a certain amount porous so it will dry very quickly it'll take moisture from the PVA that's a little trick by the way folks just pat it down after you've put it on you get a better better coverage right i'm going to clear all this glittery mess up and wash my brush and then we'll be back to just assemble everything right that's all dried now let's get these together now, i think i've got the pigs in the right pairs let's just check there's that one 
there's that one I did message her and say has it got a white bum and apparently it has um, so it because I don't know whether they're boys or girls and then there's a little creamy one and a little black and white one it is a slightly darker cream than this this is my printer's running out I think so that's that's pretty close I compared it to the colour of fudge because um, I could see it was a cream right the glue I'm using you could use ultraviolet curing resin or glue or whatever but the, the glue I'm using on this occasion is just B600 but use whatever glue you've got really as long as it's a decent strong one and then we're going to need to probably to get something to prop the trees up with while they cure while they get glue cures if you know what I mean uh, yeah, you know what I mean because they sure as hell aren't going to stay upright I might use the guinea pigs for now to prop them up actually there you go so, just going to leave those for an hour or so till that's thoroughly cured. Then we'll position our guinea pigs. Eh, actually, no. I could do the guinea pigs now if I prop that up with something else, can't I? What can I prop it up with? I know. What about this? Just a random glass thing I've got lying around. There we go, that's about right. And this one, what should we prop that with? Screwdriver. There we are. This bit's always a pain getting the trees to stay upright. <laughs> Could put a lot more scatter on, I suppose, and you know, really prop them up properly. But that does the job. Now remember that your bauble is round. That sounds silly, doesn't it? But your bauble is round, so you're going to want to put your tree in a little bit from the side. And I've definitely put that one too far over, so let's put him there. And this one, that's better. Right, let's stick our piggies on. So which ones do we decide we're together? <laughs> I've done it again, haven't I? I've muddled them up. Right, those two are together and these two are together. Okay. Nice dollop of glue. Pig. <laughs> There's, there's a million much better ways of making sure they stay in place while they glue dries, I'm sure. But I just tend to faff about and do that. So, last final check to make sure the right pigs are together. The one with the orange side and the grey one. Yeah. And then these two. And the final step, of course, is actually putting them into the baubles, which is probably a lot easier than you would th think. Oh, look, that one's already staying in place. Let's hope it stays that way. This glue does dry very quick, to be fair. So, there we are. Those are two little piggies. Now, what I do when I pack these to post them out, I will put some bubble wrap inside the bauble, just to just to stop the things like just falling around get all this glitter up so I'll show you how I do that as well I'll show you how I pack them because if you're thinking of making any of these to send to friends as gifts or to sell or whatever then um, you might need to know how to do that might you? so I will quickly show you how to do that once they're together so while those are drying let me introduce you to the baubles you've got a male and a female part so one goes inside the other okay we're still allowed to call them that Anyway, there you go. Now, when it comes to actually putting them together, you need to make sure that the thing you're sticking into it goes into the one that's got the lip on the outside. So that is the male part. And that is because you don't want glue to impede their ability to clip together. If you use this part, you've got this lip here. If you get glue in there, they won't clip together. So once you've got your thing inside and they're clipped together, you just put your little cord through there. Now, I don't glue them together because I want to, people to be able to open it up to remove the bubble wrap that I've put in for packaging. The other thing is sometimes you can get them mist up inside. Now that is usually because you haven't let the things themselves dry totally and utterly before you've put them inside. You must leave it open for, I, I tend to leave them open for a couple of days or even just sit those in my curing machine for a bit because I don't want there to be any moisture in there. 
Now these are sticking already rather well, so let's have a go. I can show you how to do the one. Uh, this one, I think the glue hasn't quite stuck yet, so we'll we'll leave that one a little bit longer. But this is all you do. Let's just put this one out of the way. Ooh. So we take an air bauble, and in the centre bottom, we put a big blob of glue. Like so. Now, of course, you could use your UV resin dots as well, then it would dry quicker. But anyway, we're just going to sit that in. We're going to sit it on a little pot to keep it upright, get it as squared on as we can, and just leave it. So that's that one done. I'll do the other one shortly, and then we will assemble the, the final part of the bauble, put a little clasp on, and we're done. Okay, we're coming in to fit our little hangers now then and all we do for these is we take a nice big jump ring and we open it up we get it ready to go through the top of the bauble and remember the way we open a jump ring is to twist like that okay so let's do the same with both now as I said I'm going to want to leave these to air and let every tiny bit of moisture go out of them before I put them in the post. So I'm going to assemble them, then I'll pull them open and show you how I put the bubble wrap in. Because when the customer gets them, I need to pull it out and pull the bubble wrap out. But I'm not, and then I am actually going to leave them open for the rest of the day and probably tomorrow as well before I post them to make sure they're properly cured. So I shall be putting them together today, not long after this is dried, um, just to show you really. So they just clip together like so. You can glue them if you want, but you need to make totally sure that the stuff inside is 100% dry. I'd, I'd give it a couple of days, because at least if you leave it so that it can be opened, there we go, and we, we twist to close our jump ring back up, there we are. Yeah, if you leave it so it can be opened, then if, there's any, if there are ever any problems, then it can be corrected, can't it? Oh, jump ring's being silly. There we are. Do the same with the other one. And let's jump ring through. Now that one, the jump ring, for some reason has opened slightly, so I'm just going to give it a little pinch, like so. There we are. Then all we're going to do to make them dangles, these are little tiny lanyards that you can get, cheap as chips, um, and they just make it very easy to convert things into dangles, because you just, they've just got a lobster clasp on the end, look, and then a cord. So you just open up your lobster clasp, pop it on, and done. Isn't that simple? Now I'm going to show you, as I said, how easy it is to open them to pop bubble wrap in for transit. So what I normally do is I cut a bit of bubble wrap kind of into, into smaller pieces, into so little strips like this usually. So just little pieces like that and then I roll them into little sausages like so. And then I open the little bubble up, make sure the cord is on the outside, then I do that. Just stops anything getting dislodged in transit. Sometimes I might need a couple of bits of bubble wrap, but all the customer's got to do when they get it is open it up, gently pull the bubble wrap out, and voila. So I'll probably put two pieces in. Anyway, I'm going to leave these now to, you know, really air and really get the last of that, uh, make sure there's absolutely no moisture in there, and then I will get them in the post. In the meantime, I'll take a couple of photos for you and let's get this out on YouTube. If you like this little video, please do give me a thumbs up. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you again to Claire from Claire's Crafty Corner for organising this collaboration. These always go so well, they're such fun. Please do have a look at everyone else's videos. If you look down in the description of this video below, not only will be the links for all the stuff you need to make these, 
but also for the collaboration. So do make sure you go and look at the rest of the playlist from that collaboration because there are some terrific resin artists out there. Some quite new to YouTube, some have been around a long time. So there's some really going to be some good stuff for you to see. Right, Merry Christmas everyone if I don't see you again before then. And uh, oh, Happy New Year of course. Bye everyone.